This is the SRM 9201. 9201 SRM. SRM uh, is San Renmu. Uh, San Renmu, the Chinese company that uh, we all know, uh, who's, I mean, I, they, I became aware of them at least uh, 12 years ago. Uh, uh, and they um, produce for very inexpensive, uh, a lot of different designs and um, a lot of them were pretty close to ripoffs or ripoffs. Now, I mean, they didn't put fake emblems on there. They didn't make ripoffs and then try and make you think you were getting a bench made, but they made a lot of designs that were awfully close to designs you already knew, uh, but perhaps didn't want to pay for. Um, and uh, so San Renmu Knives, I think this is a rebranding. As, as it says, stay ready for more. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. There you go. Stay ready for more. San Renmu. So um, I think it's a rebranding, and I think that it is showing that they are an, an attempt to show that they are capable of their own unique designs and, uh, you know, that in the past perhaps they relied on the designs uh, of other famous manufacturers or famous proven designs, designs that are proven to sell, and just glommed onto those and appropriated them uh, to be kind. And then uh, now they're they're turning a corner and saying, well, but we do our own stuff. They've been doing their own stuff for a while, but uh, making it SRM instead of San Renmu, I think, might be an attempt to distance themselves from their past reputation and forge ahead. Uh, this is actually a very uh, well-built knife. It's got some issues, uh, but well-considered and labored over knife. This is a $30 knife, and yet look at that milling. This is this is nice G10. You can, you can kind of see the fibers in that G10 if you look closely. Um, I think the backspacer, uh, I'm not sure what the backspacer is. Uh, but it's milled in two different ways, so that's that's time and energy and uh, uh, um, what do you call it, machine time? Maybe that is G10. This is G10, this backspacer. Uh, you have some details that are very nice. Uh, the handle uh, is very comfortable, ergonomic. This, this sort of uh, angular, not angular, but abrupt swell feels really good in hand. And then uh, this is awesome on the back. I love that. That shape is great for holding the knife like this if you needed to. Um, deep carry pocket clip uh, with the notch. I always like a notch so that even if the screws are loose, it doesn't it doesn't swing back and forth. Though that can be your that can be the thing that tells you that it's loose in the first place. But still, uh, I would love to see countersunk screws there. I mean, if we're doing all this for thirty bucks, I think we can do screws that that don't present in the pathway. Uh, of the clip there. Um, if you look here, it's lined, nested steel liners, very, very nice. And it's got a whole bunch of uh, lightening holes milled in there. For a long time, I was like, lightning holes, lightning, lightning, like thunder and lightning. I, I never knew what people were talking. Oh, lightening. Yeah, they lighten the knife with those holes, the removal of that steel. So uh, a bit of consideration has gone into this handle, most definitely. Great design. Uh, good materials, lots of work with a mill to get all this stuff happening. Uh, I like this uh, machine pattern or gear pattern backspacer. And then you have that great D2. This is a D2 steel blade. I haven't done much cutting with it, but it came to me very, very sharp. It's been through a couple of other people's hands, but uh, a couple of things that uh, stick in my craw a bit about this design uh, are as follows. The axis lock is unpredictable, and by that I mean sometimes it functions flawlessly and smoothly, you know, better than you would expect, uh, or, or better than you might get from a Benchmade even. And then other times it jams up, and it gets kind of just stuck, and kind of like my, my SOG Terminus, which, listen... Well, this was their their first year of making that style lock. Uh, I know they've they've gotten it much better since, but uh, similar vibe here. Uh, sometimes, other times it feels great and works great. 
um, and then other times just jams up. But it's kind of hard to tell when and unpredictable. And therefore, that's, excuse me, that's something that would, that would just kind of drive me a little nuts. So something's going on in the pivot here. I'm not sure what it is because uh, when it came to me, it had a little bit of rock, uh, a little bit of rock, and now it does again. I tightened it with the T8 and got it so that there was no wiggle there, but that it could still fall shut. And I was like, oh, that's that's pretty impressive. I mean, the tolerance is there. It's like, it seems machined in uh, that it, you can have it pretty tight, tight enough not to wiggle, but it'll still drop. Um, and yet when it's closed, it just, it's like totally loose. I, I don't understand that. I mean, I don't, I don't understand, not like I'm, I'm uh, dissing the makers. I, I, I actually mean I don't understand it. Um, how, how is it that it can be, you know, that I just turned that a whole bunch of times. So that's a little, whoops, that's a little tight. I'm going to loosen it enough to get. Right. Well, I think with a little thread locker, this, this thing. Yeah, because, okay, so right now it's solid. And then, huh. I guess you know what it is? It's not dropping shut. If you need it to drop shut, you might get that wiggle once it's housed in the handle. But right now, if you look at it, it's nicely centered and it's not doing that. So, so I think what I'm trying to say is if, if this were my knife, I would take it out. I would take out the pivot, or not the pivot, but just the pivot screw. Put a little, you know, the blue thread locker in there. Screw it back in to about this tension. You know, as long as I can whip it back in there. I don't need it to fall. You know, who, who am I trying to impress? I don't need it to fall. But I, I do want it to just come in. And I also want it to be fidgety. So I would lock that down. And then, yeah, okay. I take it back. It's, it's actually doing nicely. It's not moving at all there. It's not moving at all there. It's just not drop shutty. It's, you know, flip shutty. And who knows, maybe once you have it long enough, the, uh, the bronze washers in there will smooth out enough to the point that it will just be, you know, to me, washers are just as smooth after a while, almost just as smooth after a while as ball bearings in there. So I think that this could be a really uh, great knife for someone who is on a budget and wants to get a new knife uh, that has, you know, some class in the design and has some, some actual thought and consideration going into the design, um, but doesn't want to spend too much money. This would, this, you know, I, I, I haven't had this long enough to recommend it, but I, it seems like a good knife. It seems like it could, it could, but S SRM, San Rimno, I'm still not sure how I fe uh, feel about them. I, and you know what? I don't have to feel anything about them. So whatever. The one thing, here's a big design issue. Uh, it's, both, it's both impressive and a, a little annoying. So they did this beautiful job. I haven't seen anyone do that. Of terracing the, the inside. Basically all these long jimps on the inside of the opening hole. That is awesome. I love that because it, it actually has the effect of jimping when you put your thumb in there to uh, open it. Now, this knife, uh, I, I, I kind of prevaricated about this in one, of the, uh, in one of the podcasts, but this knife is good for spidey flicking, you know, where your, your fingers kind of grab in there and flipping it open. Really good for that. And it's really good for a slow roll, civilized man or a civilized human being roll open. Um, you know, you, you're around people, you wanna cut your sandwich, you don't wanna flip it out like that and, and raise attention, you just kinda roll it out. That terracing, it works great. That oblong, unequal lozenge shape works great for those two things, the spidey flick and the slow roll. But if you, like me, like to do something like that and flick your, here, I'll use something with a hole. If you like to go like that and just flick it open with your thumb, this thing is annoying. It's it's not good for that. You can, but it's not a pleasant or gratifying experience. Uh, but 
Maybe for a $30 knife, that's not the kind of thing you're, you're totally concerned about. But, you know, they went there. They put the axis lock there. They did the terracing. They did the weird shaped hole, um, which I know you got to pay big money to have a, a circle on your knife. It's just funny, but smart. Uh, but I don't know, this oblong shape for just the flick, not so much. But do like the way it looks and uh, what could be more important. It's better to look good than to feel good. All right. So let me quickly uh, com do size comparison so you get an idea. Here it is with the PM2. There it is with the full size grip, so to speak. Here it is with a, I, I got out all of my Axis lock knives, uh, or not all of them, but representatives from the companies that I have, <coughs> which is just three. <laughs> and this SOG, squeak, grind, still a great knife. Uh, so SRM 9201. Um, is it for you? You decide. But I, I will say, I think it's a, a well-considered knife and uh, could be interesting to see where SRM uh, goes. See that? See how that was all cattywampus? I like to see it totally, totally perpendicular to the handle scales at all times. SRM 9201. Thank you for watching.